Question number 7. You are given a figure. The line L1 has equation 4y plus 3x equals 48 and it cuts the y-axis at point C. Part A. State the y-coordinate of C. This question carries one more. Here they want you to find the y-coordinate of this point C. y-coordinate is basically the y-intercept of this line L1. So whenever a curve crosses y-axis, you replace x by 0. So you put x equals 0 here. 4y is 48. So y is 12. So this point will be 0, 12. The y-intercept of this line L1 will be 12. It's just a one more question. The point D of 8, 6 lies on L1. The line L2 passes through D and is perpendicular to L1. The line L2 cuts the y-axis at the point E. Part B, show that the y-coordinate of E is minus 14 over 3. This question carries 3 marks. Here in part B, they want you to find the y-coordinate of uh, this point. They want you to show that it's uh, 14 over 3, minus 14 over 3. So basically, they want you to find the y-intercept of this straight line L2 and you are given that these two lines are perpendicular. So when two lines are perpendicular, the slope of one line will be the negative reciprocal of the other one. So find the slope of this line first, make y as a subject. So 4y is minus 3x plus 48, y is minus 3 over 4, divide everything by 4, plus 12. That's the equation of line L1 in the form of y equals mx plus c. So the slope is minus 3 over 4. So now the slope of the L2 will be negative reciprocal of this. So let's say this is M1. M2 will be change the sign and flip it. 4 over 3. So you have the slope of the straight line L2. So you can write the equation of L2 as y minus, you have a point also, the line passes through 8 comma 6. y minus 6 equals the slope into x minus the x coordinate. So that's the, that's the equation of the line. y equals 4 over 3x minus 4 eighths of 32 over 3 plus 6. So when they say y-intercept of this line, you put x is 0, this will be the y-intercept. You simplify this, it's 4 over 3x minus 18, so 32 minus 32 plus 18 is minus 14 over 3. Minus 14 over 3 is the y-intercept of this straight line. So we have proved already the y-coordinate of this point is minus 14 over 3. So if you want to solve this part, part B, part B, you first need to know how to retrieve the slope from the given equation. You make y as a subject, so you can find the slope. And then these two lines are perpendicular to each other, so you, you take the negative reciprocal of the slope, then use this point because L2 passes, passes through this point. Substitute and find the equation in the form y equals mx plus c. So the c will be the y-intercept. In other words, the y-coordinate of this point. Sector BCE of a circle with center c is also shown in figure, figure 3. Given that angle BCE is 1.8 radians, part c, find the length of arc BE. This question carries 3 marks. Here we are going to find the arc length of uh, this sector this arc uh, B. So when you want to find the arc length, the formula is R theta. The radius of the sector, the radius is BC or C and theta. Theta is given in radius. So how do you find R? R is this length. So we know this length is 12 because the y coordinate is 12. And this length is the y coordinate is minus 14 by 3, so the length will be 14 over 3. So the total length will be 12 plus 14 over 3. That's the total length, which is the radius of the sector, times theta. 
1.8. So find this, simplify this, that's your arc length. So it's 30. Don't put centimeter or meter because no unit is given here. So just take it as 30. The arc length of uh, BE is 30. The region CBED shown shaded in figure 3 consists of the sector BCE joined to the triangle CDE. Part D, calculate the exact area of the region CBED. This question carries three marks. Now here, they want you to find the exact area of this shaded region. If you look at the shaded region, it consists of a sector and a triangle. So you find the area of them, of the sector and the triangle separately and add them. So the sector area is half R square, the radius is this 12 plus 14 over 3, R square theta 1.8. That's the area, take it as area 1, the area of the sector. And then how about the area of the triangle? You take this side as the base of the triangle. So area will be half base, base is 12 plus 14 over 3 times height. Height means this height. The perpendicular distance from the third vertex to the base. So this one will be the x coordinate of this point which is 8. So you ca calculate them separately and add them up together. A1 plus A2 will be the area of the shaded region. This is 250 plus 200 over 3 which is 750, 950 over 3 square units. Don't change it to decimal because they want the area in exact form, not in decimal form. So this is the exact area of the shaded region. Question number 8. The curve C1 has equation y equals 3x square plus 6x plus 9. Part A. Write 3x square plus 6x plus 9 in the form A times x plus B the whole square plus C where A, B and C are constants to be found. This question carries three marks. So they want you to write the function in this form. So there are two methods. One is completing the square. Another one by using the formula. I'm going to show you both the methods. The first one I'm going to use the formula. When you have A x square plus B x plus C, Instead of applying completing the square, you can straight away substitute the values here. x plus b by 2a whole square plus c minus b square over 4a. So a is the coefficient of x square, b is uh, coefficient of x, c is the constant. So a is 3, x plus b over 2 times 3, 6 whole square plus c minus c is 9 minus b square, 6 square, 6 square is 36 by 4a, 4 times 3. So simplify this, it's 3 into x plus 1, the whole square, plus 36 divided by 12 is 3, so 9 minus 3 is 6, so you got this form of it. So you know your A is the number outside 3, B is 1, C equals 6. This A, B, C and this A, B, C are different. So you got the values already. So by using, by but only thing when you apply the formula you need to be very careful when you square, especially when there is a negative number involved. Now let's find A, B, C by using completing the square. Take 3 out as a common factor. So you'll have x squared plus 2x and put the 9 outside. Half of 2 is 1. So write it as x squared plus 2x. Half of 2 is 1. So 1 squared minus 1 squared plus 9. And then the first three terms, if you look at it, it looks like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So it's a plus b whole squared. 
and you have minus 1 here, 1 square is 1, so minus 1. If you take it out of the bracket, you need to multiply by 3. So it's minus 3 plus 9. So you'll have 3 times x plus 1 whole square plus 6. So it's the same answer. A is 3, B is 1, C equals 6. That's it. So it's up to you which method you want to apply. You can either apply the formula or apply the completing the square. But if you want to apply the completing the square, you need to be very careful. The most common mistake I notice when the students, they want to apply the completing the square. After this step, they straight away write 3 into half of this is 1. So they just put x plus 1 whole square minus 1 square plus 9. This is wrong actually. Because this minus 1 square supposed to be within the bracket. So when you bring it out of the bracket, you have to multiply by 3. So if you want to skip these steps, you can skip them. But when you write here, you write it as minus 3 times 1 square plus 9. This 3 times half of it square. Then you will get this answer. Part B. The point P is the minimum point of C. Deduce the coordinates of P. This question carries one more. Now in part B, they want you to find the coordinates of the point P where P is the minimum point, the turning point of this uh, parabola. So if you want to find the turning point, you compare this with A into x plus P whole square plus Q and find P and Q. So P will be 1 here, Q is 6. So minus P comma Q will be the turning point. So here the turning point will be minus p comma q. Minus 1 comma 6 will be the coordinates of the point p, the turning point p. A different curve C2 has equation y equals ax cube plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where a, b, c, d are constants. Given that p, C2 passes through p, intersects the x-axis at minus 4, minus 2 and 3. Part C. Find making your method clear the values of A, B, C and D. This question carries 5 marks. So here they want you to find the values of A, B, C and D. The coefficients of uh, the coefficients in this equation. This is a cubic function. The function intersect x axis at 3 points. So you can straight away write the equation as, write the function as, let's say the function is y. You can write it as a times x plus 4. If it is minus 4, take it as x plus 4. For minus 2, x plus 2. For positive 3, take it as x minus 3. So that's the actual equation. But you need to find this a also. This curve passes through another point. So substitute this point here. Replace y by 6 and x by minus 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. It's minus 12, so 6 upon minus 12 is 8. So A is minus 1 over 2. Substitute A here and expand the bracket so you can find the values of A, B, C and D. A is minus half. Now I'm going to expand the bracket now. So keep minus half here. You multiply these two. It's x squared. 4x plus 2x is 6x. 4 times 2 is 8. Times x minus 3. And then again expand the bracket. Expand this bracket. x squared times x. x cubed. And you have minus 3x squared plus 6x squared is 3x squared. And you will have minus 18x plus 8x is minus 10x, minus 18 plus 8. And then minus 24. Multiply it throughout by minus half. Minus half x cubed minus 3 over 2x squared positive half times 10. 5x, this one becomes positive 12. So compare these two, 
your a is the coefficient of x cube minus half b is the coefficient of x square minus 3 by 2 c is 5 d is the constant term 12 that's all question number 9 figure 4 shows a sketch of the curve with the equation y equals tan x from minus pi to 2 pi the line L shown in figure 4 is an asymptote to y equals tan x. Part A state an equation for it. This question carries one more. Here in part A, you are given this figure y equals tan x from 2 pi to minus 2 pi to 2 pi. You have this uh, graph, tan x graph. They want you to find the equation of this asymptote L. So if you want to find the equation of the asymptote, first you need to know how to sketch that tan graph. So let's sketch the rough tan graph here. X axis, Y axis, origin. Take it as a pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which is pi, 3 pi over 2. And then 4 pi over 2. 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. Here minus pi by 2, minus 2 pi by 2, minus 3 pi by 2, minus 4 pi by 2 is 2 pi. So mark all these uh, units. Now the tangent graph consists of several graphs. So the first one starts from 0. So the graph can be your pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 are the two asymptotes here. And the next segment of graph will start from pi. So this will be another asymptote. Here also the same. So if you compare these two graph, this line here you will have one asymptote pi over 2. Here you will have one minus pi over 2. So the next asymptote is pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. This will be 3 pi over 2. So if they want you to find the equation of the asymptote, write it as x equals the x coordinate 3 pi over 2. So that's it. That's the second asymptote on the positive side of uh, x-axis. So if, if you want to find the asymptote, you need to know the tangent graph very clearly. You need to know how to sketch this. Part B, on diagram 1, sketch the curve with the equation y equals 1 upon x plus 1 from minus 2 pi to 2 pi, stating the equation of the horizontal asymptote of this curve, double i, Hence, giving a reason, state the number of solutions of the equation tan x equals 1 over x plus 1 in the region minus 2 pi to 2 pi. This question carries 4 marks. Now here, they want you to find, uh, they sketch this reciprocal graph y equals 1 over x plus 1. So start from the basic reciprocal graph 1 over x. This is 1 upon x. This is our reciprocal graph 1 upon x. So when they say 1 upon x plus 1, it's a translation over the y-axis upwards by 1 unit. So you need to move this graph upwards 1 unit. So now the, uh, the asymptote here is y equals 0, the equation of the x-axis. So when you move 1 unit up, the new asymptote will be this y equals 1. So when you move the graph upwards one unit, the graph will be like this. This is your graph 1 over x plus 1. But actually they want you to sketch this graph on the diagram given. You are given this diagram, they want you to sketch this graph on this diagram. So you put y is equal to 1 here. y equals 1 and then sketch the reciprocal graph. Here 
actually be like this. So that's a reciprocal graph. Y equals 1 over X plus 1. And they want you to write the equation of the horizontal asymptote, which is Y equals 1. Part C. State the number of solutions of the equation tan x equals 1 upon x plus 1 in the region i 0 to 40 pi and double i minus 10 pi to 5 pi over 2. This question carries two marks. This is another interesting question. You have the figure here with uh, tan graph and the reciprocal graph. So you have the point of intersection between this limit minus 2 pi to 2 pi. Now they want you to find the point of intersection between this interval 0 to 40 pi. So let's take a look at the graph from 0 to 2 pi. You have two point of intersection. So what will happen when you extend the graph? When you continue this graph all the way to 4 pi. This is uh, 4 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, 6 pi by 2 which is 3 pi. So when you extend, you will have one piece here, another one here, then when you extend this graph, you will have one point of intersection here, another one point of intersection. This is 3 pi, 3 pi plus pi, 4 pi, this is let's say 4 pi, you take only the lower part of the graph, because the upper part goes out of the limit. So you have two point of intersection here between 2 pi to 4 pi. So what I'm trying to say here, in every 2 pi interval you will have two point of intersection. When you extend this graph you will understand that. In every 2 pi interval you will have two point of intersection. So when they say 0 to 40 pi, it can be divided into 20 equals equal portions. So each portion will have from 0 to 2 pi, you have 2 point of intersection. 2 pi to 4 pi, another 2 point of intersection. It goes on. So you have 20 equal segments. Each, each portion has two solutions. So you'll have total of 40 point of intersections or 40 solutions. That's the answer for the first one. Now let's take a look at the second one now. For the second one, we divide this limit from minus pi to 0 and 0 to 5 pi over 2. So let's take a look at 0 to 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 is here. You have 1, 2, 3 point of intersection. You have 3 point of intersection from 0 to 5 pi by 2. How about 0 to minus 10 pi? From 0 to minus 2 pi you have 1, 2, 3 point of intersection. But when you extend this graph all the way to minus pi, now when you extend this graph all the way to minus 4 pi, you will have a minus 5 pi by 2 and then minus 6 pi by 2, minus 7 pi by 2, minus 8 pi by 2, 8 pi by 2 is 4 pi. So you'll have one graph here, another one here, same like the positive side. And you have only the upper part here, because the lower part goes out of the limit. Now when you extend this graph, the reciprocal graph, you'll have one, two point of intersection. Between 4 pi to 2 pi, though you have three point of intersection here, you cannot just assume that oh every every segment the two pi segment the portion uh, or the limit will have three point of intersection. No, you need to check properly. The first one has three point of intersection because the graph goes here, so you have one extra point of intersection three here. But if you talk about minus two pi minus four pi to minus two pi, you have only two point of intersection. And if you extend this graph to any limit, every 2 pi interval will have two solutions. So, minus 10 pi to 0 pi will have five segments. So, 5 times 2, 10. But you have one more extra here. So, total of 11 solutions for the negative side. Because 
the minus 10 pi to 0 can be divided into 5 equal parts. Each part consists of, uh, each part has a period of 2 pi. So each will have two solutions. So this also two, but you have one extra solution here, total of 11. On the right hand side, from 0 to pi pi, 5 pi over 2, you have 1, 2, 3 solutions. So 11 plus 3, 14 solutions. You will have 14 solutions here. So you need to be very careful. Don't just take the first segment and multiply by 5. Don't think that, okay, I have 3 solutions here. So when they say 10 pi, I need to multiply by 5. 5 times 3, it's 15. It's wrong. You need to check properly. Here only you have 2 solutions. Though you have 3 here, in this region, you have only 2 solutions. So the total for the first one is 40 solutions and for the second one you have 14 solutions.